I'm here at the ITU in Geneva and I'm very pleased to be joined by Malcolm Johnson, who is Director of the Telecommunications Standardization Bureau for ITU. Malcolm, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. It's a pleasure, Max. Pleasure. I'd like to start talking to you about WTSA, the World Telecommunications Standardization Assembly, which is happening in Dubai this year. And I wanted to find out about WTSAs and their relevance to ITU. The WTSA is the world conference for our sector of the ITU, the standardization sector. Uh, we have this uh, assembly every four years. So it's an opportunity for the full membership of uh, ITU T to come together and uh, express its views on how we're performing, uh, looking at ways that we can improve our work, looking at the priorities we've, we're working on, and uh, what uh, the future um, direction should be for the next uh, four years. We had uh, the previous uh, assembly in Johannesburg in 2008, and uh, that was a very significant assembly because it um, it changed the structure of the uh, sector uh, for the first time for many years and it also uh, gave us a lot of new work to do uh, in some very important areas that um, we've taken forward in the four years since. And so this uh, assembly in Dubai will be looking at uh, how well we've uh, responded to um, the direction that was given to us in Johannesburg and there's five in particular five main areas uh, we've done a lot of work since then on climate change issues we established a new study group on climate change and the environment uh, we've done a lot of work on accessibility to make sure that our standards can be used by persons with disabilities and for the uh, for aged people and also we've um, started a new program on conformity and interoperability. This is to make sure that uh, products and services that uh, produce to our standards do interoperate, which is of course one of our major uh, strategic missions is to ensure interoperability of international communications. And, uh, and we, we've taken that program forward over the last four years. It's been difficult. It's still to be fully implemented. And uh, we're looking forward to um, some views from the membership on, on how we're doing in, in that very important area. Also um, on bridging the standardization gap. Uh, this is um, the objective of including the full membership of ITU in our standards work. Uh, and especially encouraging the developing countries to, to come along to make sure that their specific requirements are included in our standards. So we've, I think, got a good message to give in Dubai on that. Uh, we've been very successful in encouraging increasing um, participation in our sector. In fact, uh, we've had over 40 countries participating since then that had never participated before in, uh, in this sector of the ITU. 16 just last year in fact and um, and uh, the fifth thing is that in Johannesburg it initiated uh, the idea of a, a new category of membership for academia this is very important for the standardization work because innovation comes out of academia and we need to look into the future to make sure that uh, we keep up to date with our standards work so we're very pleased that uh, we've had um, nearly 50 uh, universities join ITU since then. And what particular preparations have you been making for Dubai? There's been a lot of preparation over the last uh, 12 months um, because in ITU we have uh, regional organizations. We have six regional organizations that uh, prepare common proposals from the regions. Um, this is essential, otherwise it would be very difficult to handle individual proposals coming from individual members. You know, we have 193 governments members of ITU, we have nearly 700 private sectors. So it's very important that we get some regional consolidation of these proposals so that we can then reach conclusion based on the input from these six regions. So each of the regions has had preparatory meetings, uh, more than one, and uh, we've been participating in them. We've organized uh, some of them ourselves from the ITU Secretariat working with the regional organizations and uh, also we had a special meeting of our um, uh, advisory group in July to prepare specifically for for the assembly so I think we've we've got very good preparation and we have some very good uh, contributions to the assembly 
uh, I believe uh, we're, we're well placed for a successful assembly. I was going to ask you, are there any particular events that you'd like to highlight that are happening at WTSA 12 in Dubai? Yes, in uh, Johannesburg we started the, uh, the process of having a global standards uh, symposium the day before the WTSA starts. This is where uh, high-level industry uh, representatives, heads of other standards bodies, ministers, regulators can come together and um, consider some crucial policy issues related to standardization. It was very successful uh, four years ago, so we're doing the same thing again this time. And it'll look at how the ICT sector can interface with the vertical sectors that ICT is now in, you know, uh, health, transportation, uh, smart buildings, um, smart grids. Um, so this is going to be a very interesting day. Also, we have uh, we started uh, having side events in Johannesburg. So this time we have another th three side events, but on different topics. So we have a, a side event on, on e-health specifically, where WHO is uh, working with us on that event to see how we can have standards which ensure interoperability of e-health uh, equipment. Then we have uh, an, a side event on innovations, looking at uh, what innovations are being uh, incubated, in, especially in developing countries, and how we can bring them into the standardization process. And, uh, uh, and, the, and the third event is to look at uh, the resilience of networks to uh, natural disasters. As you know, the great uh, East Japan earthquake uh, caused havoc with the telecommunications network in Japan. A lot of lessons were learned there. And uh, these can be disseminated to the ITU membership to be better prepared for these sort of events in the future. And of course, we have a, an event for academia, our new academia members, specifically for them. And they will be participating in the assembly uh, for the very first time in an ITU conference. And finally, in terms of outcomes, what, very briefly, what, what do you hope to will be the outcome of WTSA 12? Well, the, uh, the outcome, first of all, we have to uh, appoint all the chairman and vice chairman of our study groups and our advisory group. Uh, so the leadership to take us forward for the next four years. We have to uh, agree the work program, identify the priorities, and uh, we need to look at <coughs> the resolutions which are adopted in Johannesburg and any new ones that have been proposed to give us a direction on, on where we're going and what uh, we should emphasize. So these resolutions really give us the policy to take forward for the next four years. Well, I wish you the very best with it, Malcolm, and thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Well, it's a pleasure to have this opportunity, and we're really looking forward to a, a very successful event in Dubai. Thank you very much, Max. Mm -hmm.